Welcome sa ating CLJ Notes Channel. Ngayon, ipapresent natin ang ating notes sa Prosecution of Civil Action, Rule 111 ng ating Rules on Criminal Procedure. Muli, suportahan ang CLJ Notes Channel sa pamamagitan ng pag-like ng ating mga videos, pag-share nito sa mga kapwa criminology students, at subscribe na rin sa ating channel. Ngayon, simulan na natin ang ating pagratsada sa ating mga notes. Implied institution of the civil action with a criminal action. A general rule, when a criminal action is instituted, the civil action for the recovery of civil liability arising from the offense shall be deemed instituted with a criminal action. So, kasama ng pagsampa ng kasong kriminal ay kaalinsunod na rin ng institution ng civil action. Ang ibig sabihin, kasama na sa kasong kriminal ang demand for indemnification, restitution ng mga damyos na, na resulta sa krimen ginawa o nangyari. Liba na lang, so these are the exceptions when the offended party waives the civil action, kapag winave niya ang civil action, reserves his right to institute a separate civil action, institutes a civil action prior to the criminal action, kasi nga, para hindi magkaroon ng double recovery. So, ito yung dahilan kung bakit merong exceptions. Kasi ang general rule, kaakibat ng pagsampang kasong kriminal ay ang civil action para sa damyos. Pero, yun ay hindi kasama kung yun ay merong waiver, merong reservation at may institution ng civil action prior to the criminal action para hindi magkaroon ng double jeopardy. Kasi nga, double recovery kasi nga hindi pinapayagan ng batas ang unjust enrichment ng isang individual hindi pwedeng an individual will be unduly enriched by a criminal action kung ano lang ang actual damages ang moral damages na i-grant yun lang ang pwede hindi pwedeng double double Purpose of the criminal action and civil actions. The prime purpose of the criminal action is to punish the offender in order to deter him para mapigilan siya no? and others from committing the same or similar offense. So, para magkaroon ng exemplary effect sa iba. To isolate him from society kasi nga nagiging danger siya sa society and then reform and rehabilitate him and in gener general to maintain social order para magkaroon ng kaayusan sa ating sosyedad. On the other hand, the sole purpose of the civil action is for the restitution, reparation, or indemnification of the private offended party for the damage or injury he sustained by reason of the delictual or felonious act of the accused. Ang ibig sabihin ng restitution, maibalik ang halimbawa, ninakaw. Kung hindi maibalik, mabayaran ang katumbas na halaga nito or indemnification ng mga damios pagbabayad ng mga damios intervention of the offended party offended party has the right to intervene by counsel in the prosecution of the criminal action where the civil action for the recovery of civil liability is instituted in the criminal action. Pero alalahanin natin may mga kaso na tinatawag natin victimless crimes. Ibig sabihin, walang private offended party. Halimbawa, yung kaso ng illegal possession of firearms, yung illegal possession of dangerous drugs. Walang private individual na involved. So, it's just the state, the people of the Philippines versus the accused. Yung mga kaso na homicide, serious physical injuries, parricide, and so on, may mga private offended party, kaya meron siyang kaakibat na civil action. The exceptions are where the nature of the crime and the law defining and punishing it, no civil liability arises in favor of the offended party. So, walang civil action sa ganon. Where the offended party has waived his right to civil indemnity or has expressly reserved his right to institute a civil action or has already instituted said action. So, walang kaakibat na civil action. Where the offended party has expressly reserved his right to institute a separate civil action or where the offended party has already instituted said action. So, nabanggit na yun kanina dito, yung mga institution of separate civil action and so on. So, kapag ganun, wala nang civil action, nakaakibat ang criminal action na yun. Judgment of conviction includes judgment 
includes a judgment on the civil liability. Because of the rule that the civil action is impliedly instituted with a criminal action, the trial court should, in case of conviction, state the civil liability or damages caused by the wrongful act or omission to be recovered from the accused by the offended party, if there is any, and if the filing of the civil action has not been reserved previously instituted or waived. So, kaakibat ng hatol ng hukuman dapat kasama yung tinatawag nating civil liability or damages. The real parties in the interest in the civil aspect of the case. The, the real parties in the in interest in the civil aspect of the of a decision are the offended party and the accused. So, sila yung involved dito. The rule applicable in recovering the civil liability of the accused arising from the crime. The governing rule is the rules of criminal procedure, not the rules of civil procedure which pertains to a civil action arising from the initiatory pleading that gives rise to the suit. So, ang mag-rule sa civil action na yan ay hindi yung rule on civil procedure kung hindi the rules of criminal procedure kasi nga, yun ang main action, yun yung magiging basihan ng civil action for recovery of damages. When civil action may proceed independently, independent civil actions and quasi-delics, the institution of an independent civil action based on Articles 32, 33, 34, and 2176 of the Civil Code against the offender may proceed independently of the criminal case at the same time without the suspension of either proceeding and even without reservation. Such civil action shall proceed independently of the criminal prosecution and shall require only a preponderance of evidence. What the law prescribes, however, is double recovery. So, sabay-sabay sila, they will go independently of each other but <clears throat> prohibited yung double recovery. Consequences of the independent character of actions under Articles 32, 33, 34, and 2176 of the Civil Code. The following are some of the consequences of the separate and distinct character of civil actions arising not from the offense charge, but from Articles 32, 33, 34, and 2176 of the Civil Code. A. The right to bring the civil action shall proceed independently of the criminal action and regardless of the results of the latter. So, kahit na anong resulta ng criminal case, it will not unduly affect the civil action. The quantum of evidence required is preponderance of evidence. So, maaaring ma-dismiss ang criminal case, pero dahil magkaiba ang bigat ng ebidensya na hinahanap, kasi sa civil case, preponderance of evidence lang sa criminal case, proof beyond reasonable doubt. So, maaari na mangyari na ma-dismiss ang criminal case for reasonable doubt, pero ang civil liability instituted separately under Articles 32, 33, 34, and 2176 may remain or may stand or may prosper. The right to bring the foregoing actions based on the civil code need, need not be reserved in the criminal prosecution since they are not deemed included therein. So, hindi kailangan ng reservation. The institution or the waiver of the right to file a separate civil action arising from the crime charge does not extinguish the right to bring an independent civil action. So, ang independent civil action na yun, iwalay siya and will not be affected of any waiver. Even if a civil action is filed separately, the ex delicto civil liability in the criminal prosecution remains and the offended party may, subject to the control of the prosecutor, still intervene in the criminal action in order to protect the remaining civil interest therein. So, kahit may separate civil action na if na if file on a reserve previously meron pa rin talagang mga ex delicto civil liability yung liability arising from the crime itself na maaring magpatuloy at maaring i-prosecute ng isang private prosecutor under the direct control and supervision of the public prosecutor when there is no implied institution of the civil action. There is no implied institution of the civil action to recover civil liability arising from the offense charge in any of the following instances. A. When the offended party waives the civil action. B. When the offended party reserves the right to institute the civil action separately. Or C. When the offended party institutes the civil action prior to the criminal action. So, nabanggit na natin kanina yan. A reservation of the civil action. The reservation to file a separate civil action should be made a before the prosecution starts to present its evidence and 
under circumstances affording the offended party a reasonable opportunity to make such reservation. So, before the start of the presentation of prosecution evidence, dapat may reserved na. Reasonable opportunity to make such reservations should be given also. When no reservation is required, actions under Articles 32, 33, 34, and 2176 of the Civil Code may be filed separately and prosecuted independently even without any reservation in the criminal action. The failure to make a reservation in the criminal action is not a waiver of the right to file a separate and independent civil action based on these articles of the Civil Code. So, hindi yun hadlang na wala kang reservation, basta independent Okay, civil action ang involved based dito sa provisions ng civil code. Civil liability in batas pambansa bilang dalawang put dalawa. The payee of the check is entitled to receive payment of the money for which the worthless check was issued. Having been caused the damage, the offended party is entitled to recompense. Dapat bayaran yung amount na yon. The civil action arising from violation of BP 22 is deemed included in criminal actions and the reservation to file such separately is not allowed. So, sa kaso ng batas pambansa bilang dalawang put dalawa, ito yung mga pag-issue ng tinatawag nating bouncing checks akibat na niyan ang civil action kasi nga ang involved talaga dito ay yung halaga ng check eh. so hindi siya kailangan ng reservation and, at hindi siya pinapayagan na magkaroon ng separate civil action for the civil aspect kasi nga sa nature ng crime mismo kasi nga ang involved dito ay yung amount doon sa check eh, na nag-bounce o tumalbog no reservation of the civil action in batas pambansa bilang dalawang dalawang put dalawa. The, the rule prohibits the filing of a reservation to file a civil action arising from batas pambansa dalawang put dalawa. It does not prohibit the waiver of the civil action or the institution of the civil action prior to the criminal action. Hence, a separate proceedings for the recovery of civil liability in cases of violation of batas pambansa dalawang put dalawa is allowed when the civil case is filed ahead of the criminal case. So, ito yung yung Isang bagay dito na dapat take note natin sa mga bouncing checks. Kapag nauna na yung civil case for the recovery of the amount of the check, okay, ibang usapan na yun. So, magpapatuloy ang civil case. Hiwalay din ang criminal aspect. When the separate civil action is suspended, a separate civil action is suspended when, after the filing of the criminal action, the civil action which has been reserved cannot be instituted until final judgment has been rendered in the criminal action. So, magkakaroon ng suspension ng isa. B. If the civil action is instituted before the filing of the criminal action and the criminal action is subsequently commenced, the pending civil action shall be suspended until final judgment in the criminal action has been rendered. At tandaan lang that the above rules apply only to civil actions arising from the offense charge, not to independent civil action. So, magkaiba kasi ang independent civil action sa civil action arising ex delicto or arising from the offense charge itself. The counterclaim, cross-claim, third-party claim in a criminal action. No counterclaims, cross-claims, third-party complaints are no longer allowed in a criminal proceeding. Any claim which could have been the subject thereof may be litigated in a separate civil action. So, itong mga ito, hindi na pinapayagan sa criminal proceeding. Yung mga counterclaims, cross-claims, etc. Reasons, the counterclaim of the accused will unnecessarily complicate and confuse the criminal proceedings. And B, the trial court should confine itself to determining the guilt of the accused and, if proper, to determine his civil liability. So, yun ang focus ng criminal case. Huwag nang guluhin sa pamamagitan ng pagdagdag ng mga kung ano-anong counterclaim and so on. The ruling on filing fees. Actual damages, general rule, no filing fee is required. Exception, BP number 22 cases wherein the amount of the filing fees shall be equivalent to the amount of the check involved. Liquidated, moral, nominal, temperate, or exemplary damages, the filing fee shall be based on the amount alleged in the complaint or information. Note, if the amount of the damages claimed is not specifically alleged in the complaint or information but the court subsequently awards such, the filing fees based on the amount awarded constitutes a first lien on the judgment. So, kung hindi naka-specify ang amount, magiging lien na lang yon or ibabawas na lang yon kapag magbigay ng 
damages or mag-award ng damages ang court in its decision. Effect of death of accused on his criminal liability. If the accused died prior to final judgment, his criminal liability is extinguished. So, tapos na ang criminal liability ng tao kapag pumanaw na siya bago pa matapos ang kaso o mahatulan siya. Even before the finality na. Effect of death of the accused on his civil liability. If the accused died after arraignment and during the pendency of the criminal action, general rule, the civil liability of the accused based on the crime is extinguished. So, yun. After arraignment, during the pendency of the criminal action. So, wala pang judgment. Exceptions, ito yung independent civil action based on Articles 32, 33, 34, and 2176 of the Civil Code and civil liability predicated on other sources of obligations. For example, law, contract, quasi-contract, which is subsequently instituted. Kapag ang civil liability ay hindi naman predicated or based on sa criminal act. And then, before arraignment, the case shall be dismissed but the offended party may file a civil action against the estate of the deceased. Doon sa kanyang estate na iniwan niyang mga ring-arian. Pending appeal, civil liability arising from the crime is extinguished. Civil liability predicated from another source survives that is civil liability arising from law, contracts, quasi-contract, and quasi-delic. So, yun yun. Kahit pending appeal pa siya, eh, mananatili yung mga civil liability predicated or sourced from other grounds, no? From law, contracts, quasi-contract, and quasi-delic. Pero kapag doon siya, arising siya from the crime, that is extinguished already. Novation, extinguishment of criminal liability. No, novation is not one of the grounds prescribed with the revised penal code for extinguishment of criminal liability. In catena, in catena of cases, ibig sabihin in in a long line of cases, it was ruled that criminal liability for its staff is not affected by a compromise or novation of contract. Effect of acquittal of, or extinction of the penal action on the civil action or liability. General rule, the extinction of the, of the penal action does not extinguish the civil action since liability under such action can be determined based on mere preponderance of evidence exception when there is a finding in a final judgment in the criminal action that the act or omission from which a civil liability might arise did not exist so kung base lang sa reasonable doubt and dismissal ng criminal case hindi naman base sa determination ng court na wala talagang krimen na ginawa ang akusado mananatili ang civil action kasi nga magkaiba naman ang bigat ng ebidensya na kinakailangan sa dalawa. Sa criminal case, ang kailangan ay proof beyond reasonable doubt. Sa civil case, ang kailangan lang ay preponderance of evidence. Note, the civil action that is extinguished refers to exclusively to civil liability arising from the crime and does not include civil actions based on quasi-delic, based on Articles 32, 33, 34 of the new civil code, yung independent civil actions, or civil obligations not based on the criminal offense. Can the offended party in a criminal case appeal the civil aspect despite the acquittal of the accused? In the case, the judgment is of acquittal. It shall state whether the evidence of the prosecution absolutely failed to prove the guilt of the accused or merely failed to prove his guilt beyond reasonable doubt. In either case, the judgment shall determine if the act or omission from which the civil liability might arise did not exist. So, kasama yun sa gagawin ng korte. Kung i-dismiss niya ang kaso, for reasonable doubt, sasabihin niya yon, And then, syempre, kapag reasonable doubt ang basihan, maaaring meron pa rin civil liability. Kasi iba naman ang bigat ng ebidensya na kailangan sa civil liability. At iba rin ang bigat ng conviction in a criminal aspect of the case. Effect of payment of the civil liability. Payment of civil liability does not extinguish criminal liability. So, ito ang general rule. Pero, karamihan nagkakaroon ng kasunduan ng mga party sa criminal case na bayaran ang civil liability and then hindi na magtetestigo yung mga testigo na nag, nang, nang, nang naghabla. So, in effect, nadidismiss na rin ang criminal case dahil sa ganong kalakaran or ganong usapan ng mga parties. Effect of judgment in the civil case absolving the defendant. The final judgment rendered in a civil action absolving a defendant from civil liability is not a bar to a criminal action against a defendant for the same act or omission subject of the civil action. So, hindi yun siya magiging hindrance para sa another case no, for criminal action, okay, civil liability. Magkaiba kasi ang civil 
case niya sa criminal case. So, effect of acquittal of the accused on his administrative case. The acquittal of an accused who is also a respondent in an administrative case does not conclude the administrative proceedings nor carry with it relief from administrative liability. So, magkaiba rin yung administrative case sa criminal case. So, dismissal ng criminal case not necessarily includes or will carry with it the dismissal of the administrative case or liability. Subsidiary liability of employer. The provisions of the revised penal code on subsidiary liability are deemed written into the judgments in cases to which they apply. Before the employer's subsidiary liability is enforced, adequate evidence must exist establishing that they are indeed the employers of the convicted employees, they are engaged in some kind of industry, the crime was committed by the employees in the discharge of their duties, and the execution against the latter has not been satisfied due to insolvency. Concept of a prejudicial question. A prejudicial question is an issue involved in a civil case which is similar or intimately related to the issue raised in a criminal action, the resolution of which determines whether or not the criminal action may proceed. To constitute a prejudicial question, the rule also requires, aside from the related issues, that the civil action be instituted previously or ahead of the criminal action. So, ito yung prejudicial question. Ang ibig sabihin ng prejudicial question, may naunang kasong sibil na nakabinbin sa ibang hukuman na naifile na na ang outcome ay magdidetermina kung ang kasong kriminal ay magtatagumpay o mag prosper o hindi. Halimbawa, merong kaso ng agawan sa ownership ng property, civil case yun, recovery of property, and then merong qualified theft. So, mapipending muna ang kasong qualified theft, tatapusin muna ang recovery of property na kaso. Kasi nga, kung mapatunayan doon sa civil case na siya ang may-ari ng property, hindi siya pwedeng magnakaw ng sarili niyang pag-aari. So, yun ang prejudicial question. Nakabinbin sa ibang hukuman ang kaso, civil case siya, at nauna siyang na-file. Reason for the principle, this is to avoid two conflicting decisions in a civil case and in the criminal case. So, para hindi magkaroon ng conflict. Requisites of a prejudicial question, the, the civil action must be instituted prior to the criminal action. The civil action involves an issue similar or intimately related to the issue raised in the subsequent criminal action and the resolution of such issue determines whether or not the criminal action may proceed. So, ito yung mga mahalagang elemento ng prejudicial question na kailangan nating tandaan. So, merong naunang, may, merong naunang civil action. Ang civil action na yon kapareho ang issue or intimately related ang issue nun sa criminal case na pending ang magiging resulta ng civil action ay magdidetermina kung ano ang magiging outcome ng criminal action. Effect of the existence of prejudicial question, suspension of the criminal action. A petition for the suspension of the criminal action may be filed based on dependency of a prejudicial question in a civil action. This may be made only upon petition and not at the instance of the judge or the investigating prosecutor. So, kailangan mag file ng petition for suspension of the criminal action. Hindi yan siya moto proprio sa court or sa prosecutor. Suspension does not include dismissal. It does not prescribe the dismissal of the criminal action. It only authorizes its suspension. Okay, masususpend lang muna. Hihintayin ang civil case matapos. Where to file the petition for suspension? A petition for the suspension of the criminal action may be filed in the office of the prosecutor conducting the preliminary investigation. When the criminal action has been filed in court for trial, the petition to suspend should be filed in the same criminal action at any time before the prosecution rests its case. So, yun yung uh, doon ka magpa-file kapag under preliminary investigation pa lang, doon ka magpa-file kapag naisampa na sa korte, doon sa korte na yun bago matapos ang presentation ng prosecution of its evidence at magression ng kaso. E example of prejudicial question. A question of ownership in a pending civil case is a prejudicial question justifying the suspension of the criminal case for violation of the anti-squatting law. So, meron silang iringan or civil action sa ownership ng property. And then, meron criminal case for 
squatting. Con civil action involving title to property is prejudicial to criminal action for damages to said property. So, mag for the principle of prejudicial question to apply, it is essential that there be two cases involved, invariably a civil case and a criminal case. If the two cases are both civil and if they are both criminal, the principle finds no application. So, kailangan, ang naunang kaso ay civil, ang sunod or ang pending case ay criminal. Hindi pwedeng civil case pareho, hindi pwedeng criminal case pareho. When an administrative case is deemed a civil case, in one recent pronouncement by the Supreme Court, it is when the case filed in administrative body is also one civil in nature. It ruled that an action for specific performance, even if pending with an administrative agency, raises a prejudicial question. So, maaring ang isang administrative matter or case ay magiging prejudicial question sa isang criminal case. An independent civil action does not operate as a prejudicial question. So, ang independent civil action daw proceeds independently of the criminal action. Hence, a civil action based on defamation, fraud, and physical injuries may be independently instituted of the criminal action. So, yun yung mga mahahalagang puntos natin patungkol sa prosecution of civil action. Tandaan natin na kaakibat ng isang criminal case ay ang civil action for damages. At may mga punto na ang civil action for damages may proceed independently or maaaring magiging hiwalay siya na usapin sa magkahiwalay na korte kasi nga siya ay maaaring i-reserve, maaaring siyang independent civil action o maaaring maging base siya ng tinatawag nating prejudicial question. Arali ng mabuti ang mga notes natin, intindihin at pagtyaga mag-aaral kasi ang inyong paghihirap, ang inyong pagtyaga sa ngayon ay Walang kabagay-bagay sa magiging tagumpay ninyo sa kinabukasan. God bless everyone. Stay safe.